What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another installment of Honest and Uneducated, the show where we talk about anything from movies, movie news, video games, comic books, all sorts of fun stuff like that. You can submit topics and questions to the show by emailing us at honestanduneducated at gmail.com. That's honestanduneducated at gmail.com. And also, don't forget, guys, I, I do upload everything into a podcast form, audio only. So if you don't have time to watch it on YouTube, you can go to your podcast streaming app of choice, Spotify. It's on Amazon uh, Podcast now. They just launched that. It's there. It's anywhere podcasts are. So if you like that format, it's available to you there. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and everything if you enjoy the content. But let's get into the show here. Everybody, uh, or not everybody, I got uh, Rick Metz here with me. How you doing today, Rick? Doing pretty good. How are you? I'm not too bad, man. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about some of the things that we're going to talk about. There's some in- there's been some interesting developments here with a lot of stories that uh, were kind of in some ways breaking the internet that are getting debunked, and there's some other just new interesting some interesting uh, stories here coming up. So I'm excited for that. But we that's also like. do it. Said that's what it sounds like. Yeah. So then, uh, but before we get into it, we have uh, John Knight here with us as well. How you doing, John? I'm good, man. Uh, where are we down? Less than two weeks until the new season of Mandalorian. Yeah. Excited. Yeah, not only that, uh, they just said we're not, it's not like a main topic because it's uh, not like a huge story by any means. But I just saw that uh, John Favreau did like an interview or at least had a quote saying that they were actually on track to begin uh, filming season three by the end of this year. That's so, interesting. So that's already under because we, we heard a while back that it was already like greenlit for potentially three and four. Sure. We're already. So with that, with that timeline, would that get us? keep us on a yearly schedule or do you think they would bring it back sooner than October next year? I think honestly, assuming there's no hiccups on it, since they're able to use that stagecraft technology, it seems like they're able to pump these things out like pretty quick. Yeah. For sure. I mean, they were able to get, I mean, they started filming season two pretty quickly after season one had finished and okay. that was only a year ago as well. Hopefully so, it's sooner okay, cool. than next October. Yeah. Huh. That's that's that'd be my guess I, is probably next October. Maybe I'd be holiday. happy if they kept it on the annual every October, give you something to look forward to. That oh, would... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, you'd think they'd want to switch back at some point to going to like May. Like, you know, because it used to be May that's 5th right. always, and then yeah. uh or May 4th. It, it was May 5th when the original came out. I can't remember. Um, but then they started doing so well at Christmas time though, too. Like yeah. uh, once the sequel trilogy came out, so I wouldn't be surprised if they pushed stuff back to then. But well, they also had they would probably October would make the most sense because that would give them lead up into the holiday season for the movies because that's when they had those three films already slated to come out in December and like go one year new Star Wars movie, then the following year was Avatar. For the next six years, they had that like set up that way, where it was going to go Star Wars Avatar, Star Wars Avatar. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, actually, I, I've kind of derailed the show. We haven't even gotten started here, but uh, the one thing we had talked about the rundown of what we were going to cover, and I just remembered, I saw something about a possible spinoff for um, Gina Car- Carano's character. Oh yeah. And, and one of the other people spinning off that those those two out of uh, the Mandalorian. That'd be Which interesting. I, I found peculiar. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, would, would it be her and um, uh, what's his name? Yeah, uh, his uh, the guy that the guy that was his boss, the bounty hunter. Yeah, that gave him from, gave uh, him predator jobs. Yeah, did the handshake with Arnie. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, I don't know. Carl Weathers. Yeah, Carl Weathers. Weathers. There we Weathers. go. Yeah. yeah, they were gonna do a spinoff, maybe possibly with those two, which I thought was an interesting tidbit. Now I don't know how reliable that is. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It, it 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 would kind of depend if they wanted to branch off and do it. We actually we might get a good idea of that depending on where they take those two characters in season two. True, because they could set something up for them to kind of like maybe tell a story there. Who knows? It seems interesting to me that they would spin off. I mean, I, I understand the idea of it's an established property, and so you spin off of something that's established. You've got a built-in audience that will hopefully migrate to the new show. But they had such success doing The Mandalorian, which kind of is an offshoot of Star Wars. It's not one of the main Star Wars characters. 
I thought maybe they would just continue doing that, take another aspect of the Star Wars universe, do like a a bounty hunter show or something. I mean, I guess I guess Amanda that would have been cool for that, but um, right. You know, I, I instead of just spinning off of an established show, keep keep expanding that universe out with new characters or new locales. I don't know. Well, yeah, and that's been uh, that's kind of par for the course with them anymore, though. They never want to tell new stories. They just would prefer to kind of <laughs> retell the same stories in, in some new way. Over. Like, yeah. like instead of, I don't know, there's this like big old world out there, and there's already. I diving think, into material with Mandalorian, bringing in like Ahsoka and stuff. Like they're already doing. They're like it. afraid to jump off of any other, th- like storylines or anything like that. I feel like, but yeah, I mean, I'd that, love to see. I'd love to see like a crime show set in like the because wasn't Solo was always getting in trouble with the different crime lords and the crime yeah. syndicates that he was. So I'd love to see something like not a solo show, but just like explore some of those crime syndicates a little more, see what oh, they're, sure. see what they're getting into, how, how they fit inside that universe, something like that. Right. Like the underworld show George pitched forever ago. Yeah. 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 You know that would be interesting. Yeah. That would have been cool. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's the things. That's one thing with, uh, it's one thing to just kind of tell stories we already know and use a lot of the same characters. Like, you know, with solo, for instance, like you didn't, you didn't really need a solo movie, like, but we're getting, one. we're getting the Kenobi series. Like honestly, Everyone's more excited about the Kenobi series, obviously, but um, like there's all these like kind of like Rogue One. I think Rogue One is a good example of where they told a really good story about characters that aren't ever really explored. Like, yeah. you know, it wasn't like like we already know Gina Carano's character and she works with, you know, really good where she's at now. Not that she couldn't work elsewhere, but it's just like kind of a safe bet. Like, well, let's just it's working. So let's just do it. But like Rogue One kind of shows that like shining the light on you know the actual like just normal people in the rebellion can work like Rogue One was fantastic yeah like the favorite Star good. Wars movie I think. right and it's because like it was a little bit darker man they got to show you that like they got their hands dirty you know right in the mm-hmm. first 10 minutes of the movie you had uh I'm blanking on names right now but uh Alan or so oh, uh the rebel guy, he's uh, Cassie, Cassie and Andor. Yeah, the, I can't remember the actor's name, failing me. But I mean, he has to kill his informant. Like, spoiler alert! I'm sure everybody's seen Rogue One. Okay. But uh, you know, what I mean, like, you never thought about that stuff before because you know everyone thinks the rebels are the good guys and the Empire. You know, they're the bad guys, and it's like it's war, and it's not always as clean so cut. cut and dry. Yeah. yeah, and it's like that's cool and compelling stuff, which is probably why they're making a Cassie and Andor series. So. I don't know, but. but let's get on to our first official topic here today, and uh, that is going to be kind of diving back into the world of uh, the Spider Verse. That has been, I think, for the past couple of weeks, we've had for for whatever reason they're not even filming this uh, this Spider Man movie at this point in time. But somehow all this news comes. I think Tom Holland is literally still in the middle of filming the uh, Uncharted movie, but we've had all this news come out about. Doctor Strange is joining Spider-Man 3, and then, like, there's rumors of Tobey Maguire, and then Andrew Garfield, and Electro, like, prior to that. It's, like, all these things. Electro from uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man movie, Jamie Foxx coming back, all this stuff. And it's, like, this movie's not even going to be coming out for, like, two years or something? And, like, all this news is coming out? But now, the the main uh, topic here for today is that Sony has kind of came out and squashed the rumors of... uh the Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire uh, showing up in the movie. So it yes. seems like... Now, it's not to say this necessarily isn't going to happen, because like this quote is literally just this right now. These rumor, those rumored castings are not confirmed. Huh? That, but this is someone from Sony who said that. So someone, it's pretty vague. It's very, very vague. It doesn't... It doesn't 100% shut them down. Is the only thing that like I'm really noting for this. He just says they're not confirmed. So if they do that though, they've got to have a scene where all three of them are standing there pointing at each other like the meme. Yeah, that would be perfect. <laughs> they absolutely. <have. laughs> that would be awesome. I mean, just throw it in for like a split second, even. Yeah, I mean, they did that at the end of Spider Verse with uh, Spider-Man 2099. Yep. Oh, yeah. They literally did that. But yeah, it would be a really big missed opportunity if they didn't do that and brought them back. But uh, I don't know. Like with this, 
I don't know how much I buy it, just because this isn't like a huge... I, this dude didn't just say, that's not happening. No. So I find that kind of interesting. That that's a little more promising than anything. It's yeah, just, like, like, just saying confirmed. it's not confirmed, that doesn't really rule out the fact that maybe they have talked to Toby and Andrew, maybe negotiations are going on. Like, it's, that's a very vague statement, you know? So I don't know. It's I don't know what to really make of it. Like I was hoping for when I read into the article, it was a little bit more definitive. Like that's not happening. So I would say to anybody who's hoping it is going to be a thing, I don't know. Maybe maybe hang your don't don't hang the the cape up for it yet. Maybe it will happen. I don't know. What are what are you thinking over under? Like what do you think the chances are percentage wise? You think it's going to be over under twenty percent? Either of them show up. Spider Man three. That's hard to say. You gotta take over under. If you had to make a bet, twenty percent. <laughs> under. Under. So you think there's an under twenty percent chance at this point? Yeah. I mean that'd just be a lot of stuff to tie into one movie, but you know, or yeah. series of movies eventually. But um I don't know. You gotta um, think too, what's the real what's the real uh payoff to get all this make all this happen in the same movie? Like what what's the point? Yeah. In all honesty. What like what is the point? Because it's like something that would make a cool like YouTube clip. It you know, would. It's it's a cool like cutscene from a video game. It's like a cool little thing. But is there really a two hour movie to be made with three Spider Men? What, what do you think? So, about? so either Rick or I are gonna make a lot of money because I go so far as to say I think it's eighty percent chance that this does happen. Um, wow. not, not just that this happens that we get both of them in. And, and, uh, so as to, as to why they would do something like this, um, I think it bridges the generation of Spider-Man fans, especially the Spider-Man movie fans. Uh, while everybody loves the MCU movies and they do great. I think there's still more people out there. Sony and Marvel maybe feel like that they can reach and say, Hey, look, you loved, Toby Maguire when he was Spider-Man and, and you know, but those were just, those were your Spider-Man movies and you haven't gone back to see one since. So here, here, come on back. He's going to be in this movie. Um, same for Andrew Garfield. It also gives them a way to, if they are talking about the multiverse and they're going to expand the MCU into a multiverse type state, it gives people a known touchstone for them to bring into the movie. So people can understand, Oh yeah. Okay. I see how this is happening. I see that these guys are, all technically Spider-Man, but they're they're the same character but different. Um, and and the other the other part along with this, the reason my certainty is uh, so high is that statement is so it's so lame. It, it <laughs> I really mean, is. When, when, whenever you get a studio talking about actors and possible roles and stuff like that, and and usually when they're when they're not up for a role, you get some really. Um, because studios don't want to, they don't want to get on the bad side of actors in case they, you know, blow up or they need them for future projects. And so, you know, you usually get some puff piece about, well, we think Andrew Garfield is a tremendous actor and one of the finest thespians of I, our I day. Was, I was going to yeah. bring um, that up. That's what you WB know, said about Henry Cavill. Like, we love yeah. working with Henry, but there's no plans to make it. It's like, what? what? Yeah. So, yeah. so you get these real, you know, these big puff pieces that come out instead of just a what five, six word sentence. Not going to happen. Um, yeah. And, and I think I could, I think it's very possible that they don't want to confirm or deny it because a, they want to control the news cycle when it does come out, if it does come out and B um, they, they haven't locked it in yet. And so they don't want to tell people, Oh yeah, they're coming, have something fall through and then, deal with the fallout from the bad press about not being able to secure these two for the role. So, right. And that's my thing is the quote is what kind of like threw me when, when I, when I saw the headlines for this, I, I was expecting to read the article and just see someone definitively say like, no, that's, that's never even been a thing. I, I don't know where this rumor came from. That's not a thing. This is so coy. Like yeah. those rumors are not confirmed. It's like, well, the whole so, thing, even just in general with Jamie Foxx joining it, I mean, like, that's a big, like... Right. Yeah, it's... I, I don't know. Like, well, that's the thing. Like, if I, I would probably... If Electro hadn't already been, like, confirmed to come back and it wasn't Jamie Foxx, 
then I would definitely Ooh. take the under 20%. You wouldn't have even probably thought about it if it wasn't Jamie Foxx. Yeah, it? yeah. No, if, I, if you were to ask me, like, would to, we see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield show up in a Tom Holland Spider-Verse live action movie, I would have said no. It wouldn't happen. I'd take a 0% chance on it. But with Jamie Foxx coming back to play Electro, I got to take the over 20% just because, like, anything at this point could happen. Like, and I'm not saying it's, like, an 80% chance. Like, I don't think it's that high. I, I I think maybe like a good thirty five percent chance, maybe maybe thirty five. I think thirty five is about as high as I would go. Thirty seven, thirty seven. We playing prices right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. So I don't know. It's it's mainly that comment that made me just kind of sit there like that sounds a little suspicious. It's thought provoking. Yeah, because yeah, it's like if if you if you know that it's just something that's not going to happen, then they would just say that. Like this, yeah. they, they have no benefit of leading people along on such like a like who cares? Everyone's gonna go see the Spider Man movie with or without other Spider Man in it. Like it doesn't I don't know. Like, it's interesting though. But question is, guys, what do you think about this uh news that I don't know. I, I think still at this point, it the question's still up in the air for me. So even with this quote of them just saying these rumors are not confirmed, that's not a blanket definitive no, it's not happening, or Yes, that is happening. That's still just... I feel like we're in the same place we were before this guy from Sony or Gal came out and said what he said or she said. It's, it's, it's like a non-statement, you know? So I don't know. But the question is, what do you guys think? Let us know down in the comment section below. All right, guys. So our next topic is going to be taking us kind of in the world of DC, but primarily more in the to the milestone comic, which is uh, interesting. Because if, if, if you remember back in uh, at DC Phantom, there was a... A milestone comics uh, like kind of panel where they're talking about uh, like static shock and how they were going to be bringing back a lot of uh, I think other characters within the milestone universe and everything. But this news that uh, just dropped a couple of days ago is that Michael B. Jordan himself, Killmonger himself, Freed himself, is going to be producing a static shock movie. So it doesn't say it's kind of like bummed me out because when I first heard this news. I assumed he was going to be starring in it, even though he's kind of older. Maybe they were going for an Ertle, an older static or something like that, because he has been older, especially in the uh, the Batman Beyond franchise. Static is a much older gentleman than than Terry McGinnis, this kind of thing. So they could always go the, the older route in the movie kind of thing. So Michael B. Jordan would have been a pretty good, it would have been a really good good choice for Static Shock, in my opinion. But, uh, the news here is just showing that he is going to be producing an adaptation of uh, the Static Shock series. So, John, Rick, did you guys watch Static Shock, and what do you, what do you think of them actually bringing? Because I was when I first heard this, I was pretty I was pretty excited. Like John, you were the one who told me about this. Like I was really hyped, and I don't know if I was mainly just hyped for. I was more hyped, I think, in my mind because I pictured him playing him, <laughs> which is kind of like on on me for just assuming that he like he would be uh, starring as him. But uh, because that would just be a huge coup, man, for that movie, like to have someone as big as him play like static, like it's been pretty cool. It's yeah. been pretty cool. But what do you guys think about this? I never actually watched it. Um, you never watched that show. Shot? I didn't. No, and I feel stupid for saying that. But uh, so I feel like my opinion's somewhat irrelevant on that matter. But I don't know. I mean, I I think it'd be cool. I like Michael B. Jordan. Obviously, he's not going to be in it. It doesn't sound like, but. Well, I mean, you never know. Like, you never know. It's, there's no, this article has nothing saying that he's not going to be doing it, but did you ever watch the Static Shock cartoon? No, I know, like, who he is, what he looks like, the whole, like, idea of it and all that, but I never. I always just thought it was so cool when the first thing he would, like, grab the trash can lid and, like, yeah. scoot around <laughs> yep. on trash can lids and stuff. Like, yeah. He used manhole covers. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this, this, like stupid and cool stuff is using your environment. I thought. What's his power? Like what is electricity? Oh, okay. Electric well, yeah, I mean that yeah. makes sense. Static shock. So. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Just like rubbing his socks on the carpet and touching you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's the thing too. With uh, the coolest like use of uh, this is that uh, you were just asking off off camera about good PS3 games and uh, the uh infamous series yeah it's the infamous games infamous one and two were some of my favorite games and they like they used the best and coolest use of electrical powers that like i've ever seen like like 
even like sorry the static shock like the way they did it in infamous like it was similar to how static would do it but i mean they just did so much more with it in that game so i mean when it comes to comic book or uh, g- video game based movies i'm actually shocked they haven't even considered with superheroes being as popular as they are right now why sony hasn't gone and tried to make an infamous movie you're like, shocked it's just i am shocked <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't even I didn't even notice the pun, but that was yeah. good. Yeah, I am shocked to hear it. But the so I I think that actually would be pretty cool. But what do you think about the static shock here? I'm I'm excited. I I really like the static shock comics. Um, DC announced at fandom that they were bringing back the milestone universe publishing. They were going to start publishing milestone comics again. Um, so I was excited when I heard that and. This feels like a natural extension of that, that that Warner Brothers and DC are kind of going to start pushing out into the uh, live action universe with this character as well. Um, While I, I, you know, Static was always kind of a teenager. And Mm -hmm. um, so it makes sense that Michael B. Jordan isn't necessarily playing the part. I, I do feel that there's a good chance that he appears in the movie somehow um, in some sort of role and, Obviously, you know, him as a producer is great, but getting him in the movie is even better because, like you said, he, at least in my opinion, he's a really great actor. He's um, phenomenal. So excited to see that. I'm sure that he also has, I mean, he has a lot of stuff. I know he's doing like Creed 3 and some other stuff coming up here. So depending on how fast they're trying to get this in front of, uh, in front of cameras, he might not have that. He might only have the time to do a small role for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely it, it's always good when you get people that have some prestige behind them like him uh, attached to these projects. That way, you know, there's some quality, hopefully, that will be built into it as they develop it out. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. Um, I I do feel like though, because yeah, he's static is normally you know it starts out as a teenager, obviously, mm-hmm. right? But I feel like with with a character like static one who's not like is super well known to everybody is like batman superman kind of thing i feel like they would be a kind of in a better position to have a little bit more liberty with the character in some ways like if like aging him up or something like that you know having an older person play him just just for the sake of benefiting the story more because it's Mm -hmm. not that a teenager not that there's not any good teenage actors out there but like of the caliber of someone like a Michael B. Jordan or a more seasoned actor being the star, like, I don't know, like, a lot of the, like, teenagers wouldn't have as much experience to be able to carry a movie as much as someone like Michael B. Jordan could or someone just just a little bit older, you know? That would be... And I think just given that, because no one really knows too much about him in, like, the general audience and everything, it'd be... I don't know, it's just kind of poised, like I said, to just actually kind of maybe age him up, maybe not have him be me. I mean, be like a young adult as opposed to being a high school kid. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. I mean, it's, you just get in a tough situation. Not that there's not millions of actors out there, obviously, but enough that can carry a big budget movie on their own, though, is kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, who knows? So, like, it's not everybody can be Tom Holland. You know, he's like 22, 23 years old or whatever, but he can play a high schooler, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. Michael B. Jordan a couple of years ago definitely could have probably pulled it off. Not for sure. But, I mean, he still well, how, looks, like, super young. He's, like, 30 or something. How yeah. long ago was the Fantastic Four movie? Because he, he played Johnny Storm in the Fantastic Four movie, right? Yeah. That was, what, four or five years ago? Yeah, it was, like, I was going to say, like, 2012. I don't know why. Ooh, Maybe it was 2014. Was it I was going to say, like, 14 or 15 or something. Yeah, Fantastic that's what I was Four. thinking. I, it's, it's just been so... so but he played, he played Johnny Storm in that, and I believe he was teenage or very... Very young adult in that in that film. Twenty fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he he still looks like a very young guy. He does. So, I mean, sure. I, mean I, I could totally see him pulling it off, especially if they wanted to say he's a college kid as opposed to being a like sure. Michael J. That, Jordan could definitely play a college kid, college. Like, yep. Like, so I could totally see that happening. I I don't know. Like you said, it might just be a scheduling thing. It might just not be something he wants to commit to. Maybe as he's producing it, maybe he has somebody in mind, some like young. Know, young up and coming actor out there that he's wants to like support and give him a chance to, you never know. So it could be yeah. cool. Yeah. Like, it's always, I'm all for seeing new talent. I just would love, I don't know why it was when I, when you first told me the news, I was just like, it just Michael burned into my mind. Just Michael B. Jordan <laughs> zipping around on a garbage can. <laughs> like, so I was like, damn, that's going to be really cool. 
But uh, so I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm excited for it either way, though, because what I really hope, though, too, is that if this if this works good, they make a good Static Shock movie. And Static Shock has a lot closer ties to uh, my boy Terry McGinnis. Maybe, maybe one day we'll see a Batman Beyond movie. Maybe. maybe. Then. I mean, that would be cool. Uh, I know. I don't know why they haven't made a Batman Beyond movie. They keep telling those, like these Batman Bruce Wayne movie. stories over and over and over again. It's like yeah. <laughs> they just made the Joker as a standalone movie. Like, why can't they just make a Terry McGinnis Batman movie as a standalone movie? You could yeah. bring Keaton back to play old man Bruce Wayne or Ben Affleck back that would to play be old man Bruce Wayne. You could even bring George Clooney back to play old man Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Who cares? Val Kilmer could Val come Kilmer. back and do it just for fun. Like, it, like it's, there's so much you could do with it. You don't have to go. You can just make a completely new guy playing it. You know, I actually would play a good Bruce Wayne, uh, old old man Bruce. Um, what is his name? I, I'm doing Mickey so- Rourke. No, I'm just no, 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 <laughs> no. Um, the guy who played uh, Jesus, he's in the Avatar movies. He's uh, Slang Scott Lang. I think his name's Scott Lang. He's in the Avatar movies. He played the blind guy in. Uh, uh, what's not? They call him Slang. Damn it! I need to find it. Stephen Lang. I think it's Stephen Lang. Yeah. Dude, he would play a really good... This dude, you know what I'm talking about. This dude would play yeah. a real good... Uh, old man Bruce, dude. Oh, I could see that. Like, it, uh, he's, he's a great actor, too. But he plays, like, he plays a grizzled old, like, Clint Eastwood, get off my lawn kind of dude, <laughs> like, really well. So, yeah. like, I would love to see... Uh, Stephen Lang come back into a play an old man Bruce. If we're fan casting a, you know, a Batman Beyond movie that'll probably never happen. At hey, but, never uh, say never. Yeah, they've had their opportunities. I mean, Batman Beyond came out in like 2000. Well, they've made how many Batman movies since then? True. But but here 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 is the thing that I'm that gives me the most hope for it is we know that Keaton's coming back for um for Flash the Flashpoint movie or Flash, whatever they end up calling it. Reintroducing him to audiences, wouldn't that open the door? Like, let's say they go full multiverse with the Flash movie and Flash visits Keaton and his other, whatever, his Earth. Isn't that the perfect opportunity then to retire him and bring the Terry McGinnis of his Earth in and have, that way you can have concurrent Batman movies, a Batman Beyond uh, series along with the patents in Batman at the same time, and audiences will have at least some explanation for why they're getting two versions of Batman. No, they couldn't. I, I said that before, like that him being in that Flash movie, they could set up Batman Beyond in a couple of lines there. They could, if they were sure. to show Michael Keaton, just say to like Barry a couple of times, like, you know, he, he's he's needing, to, he wants to retire, but he can't, you know, and he like holds his heart a couple of times. Like, he's doing, the, I'm I'm getting too old for this shit kind of thing. They just yep. do that a couple times and then have like at the very end when Barry's like leaving to go back to the regular timeline or his timeline, just cut to like a high school scene or something and just have someone say the name Terry. Yeah. And then like yeah, that's somebody it. Somebody turn around. Yeah. And yeah, someone yeah, turns yeah. around and like that's it. Like that's that would be all the biggest. You... That would be the biggest tease in the world if they didn't pay that off. <laughs> oh, I do, but that's how it's so easy to set up because you could literally set that up with three scenes. All yep. Keaton saying he's too old, show that his heart hurts, and have a guy get called Terry and have him turn around. And it's set up. Like you, you can go forward with it if you want. If not, it's a nice Easter egg for people like us who know what's going on. So yeah. that's what I would do. And it's a perfect opportunity for him to do it. Um, I don't know. They could, they could also tease, man. They could tease Static Shock up in there since that movie's actually being made too. They could always they, slow, could. they could do whatever they want. They could say Static's part of that universe and that so they could just amazing. do amazing, which is and that's the thing that I like that they did uh, like Joker and set it like apart because it shows that you don't have to connect everything, yeah, you know, and it'll yeah. still work, still make money, still be good. Oh yeah. So I don't know. We'll have to see. So in the end, guys, question is, what do you think about the news of Michael B. Jordan being attached to produce? That's all we really know about the movie for now, but he's going to be producing the Static Shock movie. Um, we're all pretty excited to it to some degree, hoping that, you know, it potentially leads to some more kind of more obscure. We didn't really talk about us, it, but it's uh, it's nice to see some more of the obscure characters out there, like getting some because 
he, he, Static's a bit of an obscure character in some ways, but he's a very much beloved character. And there's a lot of, you know, T comics characters and then other valiant comics. There's tons of like these little obs more obscure things, but really beloved that like they don't get a lot of, they don't get a lot of like light shined on them. They don't get their big opportunity for their own big budget movie. So it was really cool just in general that Static's getting his own movie because I don't know, people who grew up with him like me, pretty cool character. So. Whatever you guys think, just let us know down in the comment section below. All right, guys. So our next topic here brings us uh, still, we're, we're keeping in the world of DC, but we're going to kind of the mainline DC because we're going to jump over and talk about the Batman. So there's been, um, they, they, they started the filming process again after Robert Pattinson has come back on the set and for doing all their things. So they've been filming. We've had some set photos released and there's been, there's been a couple interesting ones, just of Batman and then our first look at the, uh, John Totoro is Falcone, and then another, some more good shots of uh, Colin Farrell's Penguin, and then even a shot of Zoe Kravitz as uh, Selena Kyle. Not in a Catwoman suit yet, but Selena Kyle. But there was one interesting one that uh, came up here that uh, John and Rick here, I don't think you guys have seen this, and uh, it brings up a lot of questions. So I'm gonna, we're going to go over the other set photos and see what you guys think about those two and talk about those, but this one... There was a, a set photo with a guy in a Superman costume on set on the the Batman. So, yeah. So, I got the picture here. There's literally a guy what? walking around in a Superman costume. And it doesn't look like as one that's high quality as like Henry Cavill, by any means. But, the fact that Superman in some way is on set Why? is indicating that Superman exists. In the Batman, you know, oh, yeah, like not that like he's gonna show up necessarily. This could be just some dude in a Halloween costume, but it suggests that Superman and other superheroes exist within the Batman, which is interesting enough on its own. Like, let alone if this is like a Superman, like a real, if they actually have a guy playing Superman, well, here you go. But yeah. if not, he exists in some way. I mean, how do you argue that? That's definitely Superman, too. It's not a guy in like 100% Superman. Superman's got the shield on the back of the cape, yeah. which they haven't done. Do they do that in the Reeves movies? I don't even know. I can't remember. Uh, no, no. Yeah, but he used to have in the comics many, many times. He, had, he used to have the, the, the shield on the cape. So, a small cape. Looks more like a, yeah, costume, but, like a Halloween costume. Well, it's like Shazam's cape. Back in the day, uh, their capes used to only go down that far. Yeah. It was only the more modern style capes where they went down the, just been exuberantly long for kind of, the, just for the, they just make, the only reason they do it is to get the cool shots with the cape flowing in the back. It always yeah. does look good. The only good. But uh, what, do, what do you guys think about this? That's yeah, pretty so, crazy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. My mind is run through about 3,700 scenarios of how this could actually work. Um, and I'm not sure I'm really happy about any of them. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> it because it, it, it I, I, up I, a lot of questions. The one I'm settling on is uh, Matt Reeves is a, is a prankster, and he uh, just had that. He just he knew he knew paparazzi were gonna be that's snapping good. all the photos. That's very and true. he was just like he let's fuck. Called up his buddy, was like, "Hey, yeah. you know that Superman costume you wore to the a Halloween party last and year? Walk around on set. Yeah, yeah. can you uh, can you bring that over?" That's not a bad um, idea. That's I actually like that theory more than anything. That's good. Well, because it makes wow. people think, and they're like, "Wait a minute, what?" Kind of yeah, exactly like, like look what, what we're doing. doing. Like yeah, like we're like, dude, there's a guy in a Superman costume. What does this mean? Like, well, yeah. blah, blah. and all it takes is them just to say, "Let's go do this." Because like that's the thing. This yeah. happened right when all these other like this set photo came out. Sure. You know, like I said, it's got all of them. This happened around the same time where like these new pictures came out because they went back to filming on location. So we got this and like, dude, Colin Farrell just like, I would not have even guessed that's Colin. I Farrell. know. I mean, it I mean, I know it looks, is, but like, it looks like the Penguin though, which I think is really cool. Yeah, because right? like in the trailer, you got like barely a look at him, and like a lot of people didn't even realize it was him at first, obviously, because look at the makeup. But I think they did a really good job of making him look it, weird as it sounds, like at, at like a pen, like the Penguin. I mean, like yeah. as real as they could make yeah, it. It looks like the penguin from uh, like the Arkham series, like yep. almost spot on. Looks yep. really good. I, I don't know about the space here. Though. I was gonna say he's got some hair on him too. Yeah, his, his hair, which is gonna be weird because his hair wasn't 
feel like his hair wasn't that long or dark for the trailer. I mean, they obviously shot that stuff like six months ago. Yeah. Like, but he's got some very dark he's hair. He's definitely got some hair. That's yeah, depending on the timeline of the movie, too, that could explain how why it's yeah. longer in some scenes than others. Yeah. So then we got another explain a Kyle back there. It's interesting though, too. I'm wondering why they're all together. And then he's got his he's got his umbrella. Yeah, I was wondering why are they all just like hanging out? Yeah. So I don't know why something's obviously brought them together for something. I mean, it like, looks I mean, Selena with the hat and the everything like a in funeral. The dark in the dark colors. I mean, this has to be some sort of funeral or memorial, right? I mean, but what kind of what, feels what, like just the theory crap though. What who would have to die for two mob bosses, Bruce Wayne and then a cat burglar burglar to all go to the same funeral? Who died? True. True. Like I mean, a city official. I, I don't. I don't know what. I don't know, like, you know, Selena Kyle in the animated series was a socialite. She was she was one of the well to do high society members. And I'm sure the mob bosses could be being, doing that. being, you know, integrating themselves in the the well to do, the affluent sect of society. Um, maybe it maybe it's another high society person that is passed that brings them all out. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I mean, because details are pretty unknown about what kind of character Selena Kyle is going to be, so they could very well put her more in a in a Bruce Wayne kind of role as opposed to mm-hmm. the Anne Hathaway, even kind of literal just cat burglar. No one really knew who she was, kind of thing. So they could they could definitely go that route with it. That would make mm-hmm. a lot. That would make more sense of why they're all there together at a funeral. But yeah, uh, because otherwise it is just kind of like odd, but. Then there was actually um, some shots of the, the stunt guy actually up here. Oh, that's like cool. doing some stuff, prowling along some rooftops. Was so, that first shot? Was that first shot that looked like it was out in, during daytime? Is mm-hmm. that just. No, yeah, for sure. But they may have just been setting stuff up. Okay. Sure, they they, been they doing got like, like test things a lot of time. Yeah, because if, yeah, if they're doing stunt work, because the, I imagine that. Because at one point there was one, I didn't save this uh, other shot. But they had a guy with the bat cowl on who was in one of those glide suits to make you look like a flying fox. Oh, yeah, so they yeah. were obviously doing some stunt work off this building. So they were probably just setting some stuff up, which he sure. might be wearing that there too. But I can't tell if it's a, like a trench coat because it's probably cold up there yeah. or it's the wingsuit. But yeah, they were obviously doing some work there because here he's just got his cape. He's like so. looming up on top of the building. Yeah. And that actually almost looks like Robert. Like I know yeah. it's like hard to tell from blurry little picture, but like that actually looks like Rob. But mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, obviously, I wanted to lead off with the Superman thing just because the other ones are just like, oh, cool, we got some set pictures. First one, yeah, it's weird, you know, that they're together and all this stuff. But uh, yeah, this was uh, uh, this came out of left field, man. Was not expecting. Them. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how they'd integrate I... Superman into that universe i mean we don't know much about it but it doesn't seem like something like the direction they would take oh it just based off of the tone of the of the of the trailer i just don't see superman being an actual presence an actual person in that in that world um just because of the rea- i don't know i don't know what about it but like like i mean i'm, I'm particularly thinking about Colin Farrell's penguin saying this guy's crazy when he's chasing him with the Batmobile or whatever um, that it looked like in one scene. I would think if Superman existed in the world, uh, Batman would be not as not invoke such a reaction out of people. Um, right. And and so the so then my other thought that I ran through was, well, maybe Superman's a fictional character in this world and, and it's something about the fictional characters inspires Bruce to take up the mantle or to create a, a a crime fighting persona um, like his childhood heroes of, of fiction, like Superman or something, you know, and and then, so this would be like just a guy in a Halloween costume for, for whatever reason. Um, The only problem with that is that's story wise. You get, that's a really, those are some blurry lines like, Oh, Batman's real in this world, but Superman is the fictional Exactly. That's why it doesn't make yeah. any. You can't. You can't go that route with it. Because if this is real and not just someone trolling on set, like like you were suggesting, because yeah. I do like that theory. 
Is that stuff yeah. I would totally do if I was <laughs> like in a Matt Reeves position and I was making a like I would do that if I was making a Marvel movie. I'd throw someone on there with like a bat suit just to fuck. Just to <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna people, say. Dude. Like next week we're yeah. gonna get Wolverine popping up. Yeah, there. Dude, oh my god, <laughs> I would be like, what the? I would be doing that on? all the time because you gotta think too. Like a lot of times they like to give like misinformation. Like the Russo's brothers did it a lot when they were on press tours, just giving away, giving away things. But it was just. Even like putting things, uh, I mean, they went as far as putting Hulk in the Infinity War trailer, like you know, marketing material. They put yeah, Hulk in right. the Infinity War trailer in Wakanda. Hulk wasn't in Wakanda, <laughs> like so. I mean, they like they mess with people a lot, and like so, I, I could de I could definitely see this being just a troll game from WB. I could see it happen. Maybe not, maybe not so much WB as much as Matt Reeves, but. I feel like people would have to know about this. Though. I don't know, like how cool they would be if, like, Matt Reeves decided just to do this on his own. Because it's gonna, you think this, this in some ways it might cause like just a PR nightmare kind of a thing. Because it's like if they Henry Cavill, for instance, is supposed to be negotiating again for you know his contract to play Superman, and then it's like, but if they're using Superman even in some way, in like we don't know what Henry's contracts previous said what's in the contract now like what if there's a byline in henry's contract that says like superman cannot appear in any other thing like unless it's me like you know you never yeah. know like he agrees to do like, it as long as he's the exclusive yeah. actor of returning the yeah, character the yeah. yeah which is just that's that's standard stuff in a lot of these contracts like you can say it just is what it is so i mean and even just with like this us just going out in the press us talking about it it's got to create like a lot of i don't know Kind of an annoying situation for people at WB if if Matt Reeves is just like just see if, throw Bob in the the costume here just to mess with these <laughs> paparazzis even though I love it yeah. and I would totally be doing it but I just wonder if it had to be cleared through some other channels for them to even do it because again like the people during that tweet which I don't I'm not going to believe what these random people are saying in tweets and no one really should. That's why we can't really believe or know. We have no context to what this picture is other than the guy was on set during the Batman. But it's such a huge, it's such a huge reveal, though. In, in this day and age, for them to be that careless to put an actor that is, if Superman is truly in this movie and he's going to be playing, you know, Kal El in this movie, WB is not. They're not dumb enough to just have him. Oops, no. a paparazzi accidentally got yeah. a shot of. Yeah, yeah. That's and I just, don't think that's it. So. I I think the more compelling thing though is that like it, regardless, I like I don't think that Superman is going to actually be a character, but mm -hmm. the fact that someone is on set potentially maybe in the movie in a Superman costume. Yeah, it just that is indication alone that Superman exists in some way in Robert Pattinson's Batman movie. Because you can't have a guy in a costume and then say it was just an Easter egg. It's like well, it's, well, that's that's Superman. They never did that with like the Dark Knight or anything. They didn't, right? Yeah. But like even if he was just like maybe they go to like a Halloween party or something, and there's a guy dressed as Superman. That means Superman exists. That's like a yeah. like, little it's Easter egg. Yeah, yeah, and like one of the tweets said, and this was like I was kind of saying like I don't know. I can't Take it with a grain of salt, but the guy who took the picture tweeted and said, "Like this dude wasn't just like a random dude. It was a closed set, and he got off of the extras bus. So there was a bus full of extras, and that's where the dude like got off. The, he got out of the bus. So he was on the he was on the correct side of the tape, you know, where all the people who are part of the movie is. And he there was a bus shuttling around extras, and this dude happened to be on that bus. Well, so it'd still be a troll job, obviously. The but. costume just looks very costumey." You it know, does. Like it's something you yeah. get at the Halloween store. Yeah, it's not Henry Cavill level. It's, I mean, it's like Christopher Reeve level Superman, but that was yeah. from the 70s. So, like, that's about the quality of when it looked in the blurry picture from God knows how far away. So, I don't know. I just think I it's can't... more interesting that Superman exists in the world, let alone. Well, and WB, WB may sign off on it. You know, they got the, they got the, the news about the movie being delayed recently. Maybe they're just, it's going to be a while till they are able to release more because of the delays that the movie has faced. And so they're like, Hey, let's just give people that reminder that it's happening. And they, they kind of let this troll job go through so that people talk about it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, was, I, I think your suggestion of it, someone just messing around with like, be it Matt Reeves or whoever is like, 
more than likely the the answer. I would say. No but, idea how. I have no idea how extras work. I mean, is it possible that this is just an extra that was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm supposed to be on the new Batman movie. I'm going to throw on a Superman costume and hop on the bus and go over and like. Right. He yeah. got he got off the bus and they saw him and they were like, um, "What no, are you doing? You're, yeah. you're not filming today." And then they shoveled right. him off to a different area, but he had already, you know, stepped foot on the set and somebody snapped a quick pic. Well, that's why I could see because, like, like I said, these. Those pictures, well, that picture came out around the same time all these other set photos were coming out. So yeah. I could totally see it being a staged thing just to mess with a I think it's just trolling. Yeah, yeah. And just troll. I could totally see it because that, that thought hadn't crossed my mind until you brought it up. And then I was, like I said, these other photos start coming out of like legit <laughs> photos. And then all of a sudden there's a Superman guy costume. But it looks like, like Rick saying just like a Halloween store Superman costume. Someone just yep. threw on. Like I almost think it is just them trolling the paparazzi because they just knew all these pictures kept leaking like they see all these pictures being leaked online like they know like they know more than anybody so i'm i'm gonna go with the troll job here what what's your guys's final verdict on this if you had to guess what are you thinking troll i think they're troll job troll we're all three on troll job all right i just i i can't i can't i can't bring myself to can't bring myself to uh accept that it's anything else (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, man. Like, I don't, I don't. I don't What's know. that say right there? One hundred percent of Halloween party. No, this is like the continued. Uh, it's people tweeting. That's what yeah, it's, okay. it's random. That's what I was saying. You can't, because that's what he's saying. The same thing that I was just kind of saying before. Like he says, this is a Halloween party in the movie, and does that mean Superman exists in the, the reverse? Reverse, yeah. So I mean, it's and it's valid, like because that's that's where I'm with it too. But it's like never. There's this guy, like we're we're all suggesting here that it's just a plan. Like I think, I think they were just trolling. People. Yeah, that's what all make got, people wonder and speculate. Yeah, because they knew these set photos were being taken and being leaked online, all this stuff. So they were just like, dude, go get go to the Halloween Express, put this on, <laughs> and like make these people. They're gonna get this picture. It's gonna gonna blow everyone's mind it's gonna be so confusing i I guarantee that's 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 what i think is happening here so question is guys what do you think do you think this is like actually like some of these people are speculating an actual halloween party within the matt reeves batman movie do you think kind of like us that we're thinking they're just kind of trolling with the paparazzi people out there trolling with people like us who are gonna see this picture and obviously dedicate a whole 20 minute segment on a youtube show about it so that's that's kind of what we're thinking, but I mean, it could also mean you know if it is real and it's in the movie, that also means Superman exists within this movie, which also again, it just it brings up a lot of questions if that's the case. So we're thinking troll job though. Let us know what you guys think down in the comment section below. All right, so our next topic today, guys, is going to be the Monster Hunter trailer was dropped, uh, starring Mila Jovovich. We talked about uh, the preview, like kind of teaser that came out for it. Uh, couple weeks back and they were going to be premiering everything uh at new york city comic-con i believe so that just recently happened and the trailer became online and available so we're going to kind of break down you know kind of give our thoughts on it um i, I can't remember john you you said you played the game before right yeah yeah i started was it, it world the most recent one, monster Hunter world yes yeah. yeah what did you what did you think of the game it was enjoyable it didn't grab me enough to keep i i mean at the time, I was trying to juggle, I think, the PS4, Spider-Man, um, Destiny 2, and something else, I think, at the same time. So it ended up getting the short straw out of my, you know, maybe one or two hours a night of gaming I can actually squeeze in. So um, yeah. I didn't get that deep into it. But um, it was fun from what I, from you know, what I, what I did get to play of it. What did you... The, the, uh... the trailer looks nothing like the game from yeah. what i remember so. yeah for sure that's what i was gonna ask because i i haven't played any of the monster hunter series on like in the game wise but i have friends who just like love them my brother mm-hmm. love yeah and like i mean i so i know about the game i know how the game works and uh, i could totally see if you were uh trying to juggle this game in between other games it's it's such a grind fest that it probably wouldn't be the most enjoyable thing to like only playing for like an hour, you don't really get much done. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? 
So, and I think that was, I think that was the hardest part for me. Why I ended up not sticking with it is because I felt I, I, I got very early on, I got the impression, okay, this game really takes some, some time to delve into and really get, really get a good feel for. So. But with this trailer for everything, what did you think? Because I think the biggest takeaway I have, because other than the fact that, like, I don't like that they're going through, like, um, oops, the they're doing the whole like Transformers bit, like they're they're focusing <laughs> on these, you know, like military soldiers in our time, like right, you know, like they're doing the, it's the same shtick, you know, it's like, and to me, it's just something they gotta do, like they do it just so like the general audience can connect with the story more because they can't just tell the story with like, you know, crazy monsters and like people in the, the video game armor, like Tony Jaws character. Cause that's just too confusing for people, but throwing a bunch of soldiers in some portal to go into another world and then explain the world and what happens in the world is much more easier for people to understand somehow. Mm-hmm. I don't know why Hollywood thinks that's the case. Like, I don't know why they can't, them just, just make stick it, to the yeah, just make the movie. Like I don't know why you got to make things complicated. Like now, granted, if they're going for an angle that's like, which I bet they do, because there's like the the international trailer, uh, which you should go watch the international trailer if you haven't, because it's a much 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 better trailer. Uh, I think it does a much better job at making the movie look even, like actually like pretty pretty good, all things considered. But uh, there's a scene in there where. Mila Jovovich's character tells Tony Jaws' character that they need weapons. So if they're going for this angle that, like, your human weapons don't work here, you know, here's a sword made from bones of a dragon. You know, yeah. this works. Catches like, you fire and stuff. Yeah, if they're going for, like, that kind of vibe with it, then, like, I guess, like, sure, they could have them, them in there, but I feel like it's kind of, like, wasted in some ways. Like, do we really need to see, like, we've seen that plot happen before. Like, you know, the, the humans go to some world, their weapons don't work, they use the, the, the stuff that's there, and it works. Yeah. It's, a, a, it's such a... And... Yeah, it's such a basic thing. So, I don't know. Like, I just... I, I Part of me wishes it was just... You know, a Monster Hunter movie, as opposed to them having to do this amalgamation of using... I hated it in Transformers. Like, Transformers... Didn't work. care for that. Yeah, the worst part of those Transformers movies is the human stuff. Yeah. Not that I mean, yeah. the dialogue is the worst, but it's then, pretty bad. Yeah. Hey, after that, the the all the stuff they had to do with the army for like no reason, like yeah, I don't know. That's that's what bothers me. But I will say though, the thing that impressed me most was uh, just the overall creature design of the monsters. I actually thought was pretty good. Like I think they uh, looked really good. Yeah, the seat they did. It seems like. I heard someone else say, like, the whole trailer shows them just being in, like, this desert. And, like, it's true. Like, it's just, they just have this one set, and then, like, they have <laughs> one plot of sand to film this movie. Right. And then all the other budget went to CGIing the monsters. Because that looks sweet. Because, like, the monsters yeah. actually look really good. I think Tony Ja being in it's sweet, too. He's a awesome, awesome like, stuntman actor. He's done so much stuff. Oh yeah, it's crazy martial arts. Yeah, crazy martial arts. But see, and I like like this. Like that's the thing. Like I just wish like it was more of this. Yeah, the, this is what the movie should be. Just take away the couple, Humvees and the yeah. Man. Just you just have a couple dudes in this like bone and dragon armor, and you go out there with your drag dragon bone bow, and you just you take out the monster. That's the movie. You don't need the subplot of like you know these humans aren't from here kind of thing. Like yeah. I- understand the idea of a, a complete narrative where you have a beginning middle and end and where you have you know you establish why the characters have why they're fighting these monsters but montage that shit do that in the first like five minutes of the movie montage why how monsters have taken over these people's world and 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 to fight them they they came up with these crazy costumes and crazy weapons um yeah. Don't get, because you can just tell, like, oh, well, maybe not. I could be wrong, but I have a very strong belief that the first half of this movie, it's it's not you're not going to see those crazy costumes and those crazy swords until the last act of this. Oh, movie. Yeah. You know, it's it's going to everything before that is going to be set up and 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 their weapons not working, and so you know, it's going to be disappointing to only get that you know small fraction of what looks to be pretty cool scenes. Yeah, and that's and that's what really 
surprised me the most because I kind of I was giving Paul W S Anderson some crap about the, the his work on the Resident Evil movies and how much like one like the the effects in those movies I mean they were the low budget movies but the yeah. effects in those movies weren't good the way they were those movies were cut together wasn't good and like. I had to go back and give him some credit because there were some actual good movies he has made, like uh, Event Horizon and uh, what else? Talking about it, I forget. But he's made it's the a, Alien well, versus Pre- yeah, Alien versus Predator. AVP, and then the first Mortal Kombat movie. That like, yep. are those movies Oscar caliber? No, <laughs> absolutely not. But they're all good movies. Yeah, they're like I good. like like those three movies that he made. They were they were actually good. Like I enjoy them, and. uh I'm hoping that this is another one that's like, you know what? I hope it may, if they can at least make this an enjoyable movie, like, even if it's not a good Monster Hunter movie, if they can at least make it a good movie, I'll consider it a win. Yeah. You know, if they can if just it's make it like entertaining. Like a, and yeah, like a cool monster movie and like, yeah, it has some facets of, you know, the Monster Hunter game with like, if it's just Tony Jaws' character, it's like, that's fine. That'd be cool with that. <laughs> yeah, it, they got some like the the monsters look good. I hope the story is like I don't know. We know what the story is, so it's kind of like they go there. They don't want them to go to our world, and it looks like too. If you see like um, the very end of the the trailer, this scene here, this almost looks like the end tag of the the movie because like she she makes a comment, another point that uh, in the international trailer that if like. The, if we can get to their world and they can get to ours, we have to like you know break the portal or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And this happening. seems like they found a way to like get back to their world, and the dragon came with them, and then it's like the post credit scene. That's Cause, yeah, that cause, looks like because now all of a sudden, where'd this guy come from? The Osprey. Yeah, yeah. The the helicopter wasn't there when they got ported over, so that would indicate that this is. After the fact, in our world, for the helicopter to be, it looks very obviously like a regular desert in these scenes too. It doesn't look like the crazy like monster hunter world yeah. that they were. They, yeah, there's no bones. Like this is like Earth. Like yeah. So like, kind of gives away the movie if you read too much into it, in mind. Because I feel like this is literally that. I feel like that is literally the post credit scene to set up. A- yeah. Like now the monsters are in our world, like for whatever reason, which. Again, that's even more boring if they go that way, though. Because yeah. that, like, that's really taking the whole Monster Hunter thing and just not doing anything Monster that's Hunter. The Transformers are up. Yeah, because now it's all of a sudden the monsters are just on Earth. That takes all the, the, the fun and the lore of Monster Hunter completely out of it, and now you just have monsters on Earth. It's not, yeah. really, the, not really the same thing. But if they can at least make a good movie, that's all I'm kind of hoping for. Because I like, like kaijus and stuff. You know, like, yeah. I like Godzilla and all that kind yep. of stuff. So, I mean, hopefully they can make a good movie. Kind of like Pacific Rim. Was That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. God. Such a good series. Why well, can't... To this day, I'm bummed they did not let Gil... Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro do the second one, and they didn't continue that. Yeah, because the second, second one wasn't one, very second good. One. Yeah, I, I thought it was okay. It, was, it wasn't as good as the first, but I thought it was okay. I just... I was really looking forward to that sequel. And, yeah. The kaiju. Because I'm a... Yeah, I'm a big kaiju... The thing I didn't like about the second one was that the whole sense of scale was completely taken away in the second one. Like all the the Jaegers could, you know, like in Guillermo's, he made it to where like you felt how big the Jaegers were when they moved. You know, it's kind of like I was talking about a week or so ago with the the frame rates for small scale models. They have to like you shoot small scale models in like a lower uh, or a higher frame. I forget which it is, but it's to make it like look our size because the gravity affects like buildings falling over and everything. Like, everything's different. So you have to shoot it at a different frame rate than you would shoot it. You know, I think you have to double the frame rate. I think it's what it is. Yeah. I can't remember. And then like play it back in a certain way. And then it, like it just messes with the scale. So like the Guillermo did that really well with the Jaegers in his movie. Cause like there were these shots where it was just like moving and it's like, you see how big it was in the second one. That was all gone. These things were like lightning quick. Like they were like robot ninjas. And it's like, it was just, since the scale's gone, it was kind of lame. They were just kind of throwing them everywhere. Robot ninjas. <laughs> yeah, they were. They, they were Essentially. That's what they were. Yeah. But uh, I also didn't really care for the whole, speaking Pacific Rim wise, the whole dual pilot system. 
I felt like that was so unnecessary. Yeah, where it's like two people like it was, interlocked. Yeah, definitely like, strange. Like I think did they have to do it so like Gundam wouldn't sue them? <laughs> Probably. Oh. <laughs> like, is that it? Yeah. Like, it's like, no, they're not Gundams, they're, man. Uh, we they're, swear they're not Gundams. Yeah, they're two pilots. They, yeah, they have dude, two pilots, dude, and yeah. they have a brain it's link. It's different. Yeah, it's completely different than Gundams, I promise. Like, I, That's the only thing I could ever come up with as to why, because I just thought it was kind of a stupid thing. Because then you had the Charlie Day scene where him like doing the mind connect with the kaiju itself, and it's like, all that just seems so unnecessary. It's like, oh. you got big robots, and you got big monsters. I don't need anything else. Like, <laughs> well, Bandai made uh, Pacific That's what Rim model for. kits. So, yeah. like, Bandai makes Gundams. They yeah. made Pacific Rim models, like, in the same thing. So, right. That's why, too, when that movie came out, I was literally like, so why isn't this just a Gundam movie? That would be cool. Right. Like, that you're literally makes... making this movie with giant robots with human pilots in them, and it's yeah. not a Gundam movie? <laughs> right. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm still... I'm still waiting on that movie too. That's I'm talking what I'm about saying. like Bat- waiting on Batman Beyond. Where's this Gundam? I thought Should for sure. Sick. I thought for sure when we got Transformers, Gundam was right around the corner. Like I thought. Well, for have sure. you seen the life size one that they're building? In, yeah. Is it Japan? Yeah. yeah. It moves. It moves oh, now. That thing well, is they've amazing. got a couple life size ones like on display, but yeah, the new one like actually is like robotic. Like, yeah. I mean, it moves yeah. very very slow, but it looks really cool when you. Like people take the footage of it moving and then speed it up so it looks like it's moving at a normal <laughs> pace, and that yeah. looks cool. But then you watch it in real, like real life and real yeah. time, it's like it's cool concept. <laughs> but like, and all it does is just it has like no articulation. It can just move its arm, it's like elbow. Like, that's it. Yeah. Like, but I mean, it can move. Oh, it's baby still steps. Cool. We're getting there. We're getting there. Baby yeah. steps. It it is cool in concept. Either way, the fact that they decided to build one and it's fully robotic and moves. I mean, that's cool enough on itself. I'd love to go see it. Yeah, it'd be cool if you could get inside of awesome. it. Like H&E, they, like, you go to Japan. Yeah, like if they made it like a, just like a theme park kind of attraction. You know, where you could go up and go in the helmet, like a cockpit area. Yeah, I'm sure the line would be intense for it. The one single thing you could go into, but it'd be really cool. Nevertheless, though, with the Monster Hunter stuff, I gotta say, I was I, I was very hesitant about the movie prior to this, and I think the tra- the trailer didn't make me less excited. I'd say, if anything, it actually made me a little bit more excited to see the movie in some ways. I, I agree. I'm, I'm hopeful it's good because I wasn't completely blown away by it, but I was surprised at how competent it looked. Okay. It does. Yeah. Yeah, not that I can't, I don't like the story like they're going and they're having to shoehorn in the U.S. soldiers and all that and like two different worlds. I don't really care for that aspect of it. But it looks like it's that, got a lot going for it. To what? I said it looks like it's got a lot going for it. I mean, so far. Yeah. I mean, given that we're getting that kind of generic story, I think they're at least, it seems like they have done a, a decent job of making it at least look like it's a quality production. As opposed to just some Mortal Kombat 2 kind of movie. Yeah. <laughs> Resident Evil kind of movie. Where it's just like, they're just pumping them out just to pump them out. You know, it looks like yeah. they put some, some work and effort into it. So we'll just have to wait and see. But the question is, guys, have you seen the Monster Hunter trailer? If you haven't, I'd recommend go watch the international trailer. Because I, it, it's just a much better trailer. It shows you a lot more dialogue in between the characters. Uh, primarily between uh, Mila Jovovich and... Tony Jaws character, so you get a little bit better of an idea of kind of what the story is, even though it, it is pretty much just that basic story, like I said, with the humans coming there and whatever. But anyways, guys, if you've seen the trailer, let us know what you think down in the comment section below. All right, guys, so our next topic here is about uh, like a recent shareholder meeting that Disney had. Um, they, ha- they had some interesting announcements in it because they there's going to be another meeting for this, I think, coming up, and they're going to get more into details about um, what yeah, you know, what kind of what they're actually talking like, what they're meaning by this, but they're saying that they're going to be, um, pretty much doing a massive reorganization, switching their primary focus to uh, their streaming service, so in the Disney Plus, and um, it's kind of we've been talking about this before, at least especially recently as of late during the pandemic and everything with um, you know, the movie theaters being in the state that they're in right now. We've, I mean, I've kind of stressed in. We've all kind of stressed here that, you know, the theater's got a good chance of just going away forever. And if the theaters go away forever, there's it's not just like, oh, everything will be fine because we'll just watch it all on streaming. 
yeah it, there's a lot more issues that come with it because like you're not gonna be like making 2.6 billion dollars uh by putting a movie on disney plus so like the when you go to make them like when these studios go to make movies if if they're not gonna be like guaranteed these big returns like you know a marvel movie for instance making a billion dollars is not going to happen anymore so they're not going to be able to make the movie for 200 million you know like so they're not going to be able like studios are going to have to pick and choose how much they can like spend on movies if you know if theaters just completely die and it's just there's just so much that comes with it just financially that uh that, that's what has me worried about more than anything because it means like we could get less movies we could get lower quality movies we could get less and lower quality movies because nothing, nothing would indicate that we're going to get more and better movies out of this. Because just given, like, in Netflix, for instance, net, for every one good movie on Netflix, for every one Irishman that costs, like, $300 million or whatever Scorsese needed to make that movie, and they definitely didn't see no $300 million return on that movie. But for every Irishman, you have, like, 10 of these movies that you've never even heard of with people in it you've never heard of, with you know, it just they're not and they're not good. You know what I mean? They're just like almost like they're just almost like half these films on Netflix, I swear to God, they're almost like college like student films. Just like filler movies. Yeah, like not that like I'm dogging on student films or anything. Everyone's gotta get their start. I'm just saying it's like the quality of such is not something that you're gonna go and like pay fifteen dollars at the movie theater to go see. So it's on Netflix. You know what I mean? It's it's content for Netflix, which is good. But you're not gonna make three billion at the box office. It's like straight to video, like VHSs and DVDs. Yeah, that's it, it's exactly the quality that it's is, is been. This is a Walmart bin of straight to yeah, five straight dollar to, bin. Yeah, the five dollar bin of the straight to video releases. Like that's what a lot of the content, even on Disney Plus, like Disney Plus right now, they have Mandalorian, and that's it as far as their big budget productions have gone for an entire year. They only have that. Like yes, they have other things in the work that are even coming out on Disney Plus. And if they have these other little shows that just cost like you know the the shop class show, then the, the with uh, Justin Long, and then they have like yeah, the High they, School Musical show. That yeah, was, yeah. All, all these shows that cost like very little to make, and they don't go to like a wide audience or anything. And like that's that's my worry is like if we lose theaters, just these these big movies aren't going to be made. Anymore. You know what I mean? And like it says, December tenth is when they're gonna actually have this like actual press reveal, shareholder meeting, a virtual event or whatever on December tenth for the investors to reveal more information about the strategies. So I don't know. Like I'm just like I'm worried. This has me worried because I think John, we were talking about this when when uh, we first heard about this, and uh, I just lost my train of thought. Damn it. Um, well, well. Yeah, we did talk about this, and I, I just for my own curiosity, googled some numbers, and Netflix apparently the the estimate or the the numbers that Netflix has released is something like 185 million subscribers. Mm-hmm. Um, Disney currently has like 65 million subscribers, so Disney's trailing Netflix now. Netflix, of course, has a a lot longer lead. On, on Disney as far as that they, they are the kings of streaming right now um but Disney you know this could be Disney trying to make a move to catch Netflix um and then I started running just in my own head for my own curiosity what the numbers are if if Disney can can match Netflix or even surpass Netflix but let's say they get to a hundred and uh, 185 million subscribers each month. I think Disney can you can get a Disney Plus subscription for about seven bucks. You're talking about 1.2 billion dollars a month in revenue by through from a from a streaming service. That I, I that might justify the shift, and it might allow them to continue producing some, especially when you can do things like. The high school musical shows that aren't effects heavy, that don't require a lot of, uh, that don't require giant production budgets. Yeah, um, it might allow them to keep the quality up on some of these things, 
if it's driving those kinds of numbers and that kind of revenue to the business. And then you can still, and we had talked about this. We we had talked about, you know, maybe you see things like the next Ant-Man movie go straight to Disney Plus, but then you see Disney only have, you know, six to ten major releases in the theater each year. So you only see the 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 giant budget Avengers flicks on the theater um, on the big screen. So so they scale back instead of having, you know, 15 to 20 movies each year on the big screen, you get something more in the range of five to 10. And then everything else is budgeted down to fit on the streaming service. And that's my worry. Not like, cause I will say there, the, um, like Martin Squirrel says, he's spending $300 million for like the Irishman or anything like they, a lot of these people don't need to be spending. Like not, there's when no I say these way people, they need to spend. Yeah. They're, like the studios don't need to be making these movies for 300, 200. Not every movie needs that much money to make. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so they, I feel so, like a lot of these spending has just been out of control with them. I think it's because of Martin, though. Yeah, but just, like, dude, he was wanting the same thing. Like, he wants like two, two hundred plus million to do a period piece drama with Leonardo DiCaprio. It's like, what the? What do you why? need two hundred million dollars to make a period piece drama movie for? Like, yeah, with no like no special effects, just costuming work. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like, and there's a lot of these things. Like, Blumhouse can go make Invisible Man for like. Six million dollars, you know. What I mean, and it's perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. Like, good movie. Like, and it's, I get like the Avengers is going to cost a lot more, but not every movie is the Avengers, you know. Yeah. yeah. But the the thing is though, and John, we were talking about this like a week, like a week or two ago with um, uh, like the theaters or the studios rather, like they don't have all this money just like sitting in their back pocket. Like this is all made on like borrowed money, right? Yep. And uh, like for instance here, like you were saying, like you know if they had 185 million subscribers make X amount of money and everything. The, the, the problem with it is though, um, without the theaters, you're still missing out on those extra profits, like substantially. Because, like, for instance, like Netflix, they're $14 billion in debt. A lot of debt. Because, like, even like Netflix, like, they, they have to borrow the money to produce the content that they, even if some of it's good, some of it's bad, whatever, the, the amount of content they pump out. They're fourteen billion in debt, and they Netflix, they don't make movies that go into theaters that make two billion dollars, one billion dollars like Disney does. So I just, it, I just feel like there's like an imbalance. Obviously, I am not a part of this business on a financial aspect to really understand how they're moving and making all that much, other than looking at the numbers that are presented to me and things like this. But it, I, it's I, my. My understanding, though, that a lot of this, a lot of this push to get into the streaming space and a lot of like Netflix, the reason Netflix is able to be $14 billion in debt is because of the predictions or the the look at at future possible earnings. I'm not sure if Netflix is available in China, but you're looking at, you know, China and India with with markets that have billions of people. I mean, 185 million subscribers is great. But it's small. It's very small compared to 7 billion, 8 billion people on the planet. And as Internet becomes more available to more and more people across the globe and as, you know, they can bring these services to more and more people that that those numbers are going to I think I think what the thinking is, is that those numbers are going to jump exponentially instead of seeing, Mm -hmm. you know, 185 million subscribers you'll see 500 million subscribers, maybe even a billion subscribers to a service. And, and they're kind of trying to, trying to cash in on that future market today um, by, by focusing their efforts there. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. if, I mean, I could see if the theaters were to die, I mean, that would obviously make people subscribe to these services a lot more. Like you definitely see more of but I don't know. I just don't know if like financially, like without having like a guarantee that, like, cause that's the thing too. Like we were talking about before, like we know, or uh, there's plenty of people out there who will just subscribe like month to month and then they'll cancel their subscription once they're done watching the, the show, you know? And like, I wouldn't fault anybody for doing that with like Disney plus right now, because there's just, unless you have kids and want the back catalog of stuff, the only thing they have on there is Mandalorian really like, and, that was done a year ago, but 
I don't know. My main worry with this, like, I'm sure, like, the financials would obviously work out at some point in the end because, yeah, like, uh, even a hundred, even a hundred million people paying seven, eight, fifteen dollars a month for your streaming service, like, that's a ton of money. Like, you're just literally just swimming in money at that point. My only worry, though, is just that I just don't want the films to suffer more than anything. Like, you know, I don't, you know, I, that's, that's really, I mean, I, I mean, we all suffered through the, the CGI growth of, of the nineties and early two thousands when, when, you know, CGI was good at times, but it was also really bad for Horrible some, and some other stuff. And, yeah. and you don't want to mm-hmm. see that, that, that quality take a dip. Cause we have a certain expectation now we've seen that what it can be and what it should be. And you don't want to see that drop. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree that that's the last thing we need is for the quality to to take a hit just so that they can try and cash in a little more. Yeah, I, I don't want the quality of I don't want the I don't want them to trade and not that Netflix just pumps out all garbage movies, but like Netflix, in some ways you could argue they have a a quantity over quality mindset. Like they yeah. just. They do. They just pump as much stuff out there and get as much stuff on on their platform as possible. Which I mean, it works for them. And there are some good stuff. You know, it's exclusive to them. Like uh, something we're going to be talking about here in a minute. Our next top, one of our next topics. That uh, that Adam McKay movie that with a huge cast. That's a Netflix. Movie. Like they are like getting some more movies that uh, I don't know of more prestige. So I've always I've always kind of wondered. How Netflix? I I like Netflix, and I have Netflix, but it's mainly for streaming old TV shows that I like, um, old series that I like to be able to hop into and see. Which are you know you're getting less and less of now um, as those as those shows move back to their original parent companies for their streaming services. Um, so I you know I don't see myself sticking with Netflix for that much longer um, because. One of the things that really I I feel like Netflix does is they they hurt their brand by canceling by starting these series. They like you said, it's quantity. They release a new series every weekend, if not multiple series every weekend. Well, it seems and like a lot of times those series get one, maybe two seasons, and then they're canned. For every for every Stranger Things, there's a hundred other series that they made that got one series. But the thing is, there's there are subscribers that watch those and love them. And then they're just, they have the rug just pulled out from under them. And I can't imagine that that is good for customer relations, that people enjoy getting attached to these series and these shows that they like only to find out that no, nah, they didn't perform as well as Netflix wanted. And so they're mm-hmm. just taking it away right away. Oh yeah. And that's the thing too. They, they pump out a new show every week and they don't market it. No, yeah, you they never know it. anything about these things like ever. Yeah. Like there's so many times someone will ask, like, "Hey, are you watching X?" And I'm just like, "I've never even heard of it." It's, like, yeah, yeah, it's really. on Netflix, and it's like, "I'm used to no me, marketing." Man. Yeah, like they don't market anything. They don't. That's one thing I think that they've always missed out on is like, why don't you see like even on network television, just play a damn commercial for Stranger Things, like promote right. the stuff, like you know, because yeah. even on Netflix, on they just started changing things a little bit to kind of promote stuff when you first turn it on, like their splash page, but it only is like. It'll start like auto playing like one of their newer titles, right? But that's like it. Like, and I feel like for the longest time, like they don't even they should have like a just a straight up like tab on the top where you go to new this month, and then yep. it shows you everything that's new this month. And you, you like, they don't would do something that simple. Yeah, they don't have anything like that. So it's like you have no way of knowing unless the algorithm randomly throws it up in your feed, and it's like I don't know. Is their marketing department just like sucks? Like there's just so much stuff on there because if it's not something that's already a proven big name property thing, like they're not advertising it. Well, and it's hard for people to find it, and then yeah, it's just... well, yeah, because they like the thing they have. There's so much stuff on Netflix. I spend more time half the time looking for something to watch on Netflix, and then I close the app because I I didn't find anything to watch. Yeah, you know, like I spend two hours looking for a movie to watch. You know, you never find it. Like, I don't know, it's just I don't know. I just in the end with this stuff, I could definitely see with enough subscribers and everything, then I could definitely see like streaming at some point becoming a valid way for studios to make still make big budget stuff without theaters. But then like again, you're missing out on the theater experience if there's no theaters too. And it's like 
I don't know. I'm just more worried that the feeders are going to be gone forever and it's going to cause a detriment to. It's going to, for one, really industry. put it. Do what? Just like cause a huge like dent in the entertainment industry. Like. Yeah. I mean, because that's the thing too. And uh, actually, this was a good point too. Chris Rock actually came out recently, just said something about he commented on the movie theater thing. And he's he made a really good point that I hadn't really thought of. And it's like, w- like movie theaters are one of the most affordable night out, like oh, yeah. for families. Like, cause anymore, it's like it, it's it's like a date night kind of thing. It's like you can go. It's like fifteen bucks. You go there. You can you know what you're doing. You go and get it done. Like you're there, it's reliable. Like you know, it's always there. You go see it. And like, cause a lot. If you just want to go out to the dinner, it's gonna cost substantially more than just going the movies you know like if, if you just isolate the movie going experience itself like from a financial aspect like it's easy access and it's like super affordable mm-hmm. you go take a family to like pretty much do anything a family of five i mean the movie theater gets expensive at that point but a dinner for five costs more than a movie for five well, and unless know. you live in like a super rural community like movie theaters are everywhere yeah that's the thing so I didn't really never really thought about it that well, point if, of view. Like, yeah, if you try and go crazy. see if you try and go see what, like a Disney on ice or something like that, I mean you're paying what, yeah. 40, 50 bucks a ticket for yeah. you know, per per person a family. So yeah, compared to something like that, it's uh yeah, or even like a sports game, you know, sporting I, Oh yeah, oh god, a I sporting mean, event is yeah. Like, that's not even including like snacks and stuff. Yeah, like exactly. That. So it's like the mm-hmm. and I literally it was just, I had never really thought of it, but like yeah, because you always think like especially like me having kids and everything, like it is expensive for me to go out and take everybody to the theater and everything. But when you actually start thinking, well, yeah, but I guess five tickets to like even like I don't know, like the museum or something would probably cost more. Or five tickets like wherever like do a sports game, whatever. Like movie theaters are actually a lot cheaper than a lot of other things, and they're always there. And it's typically if your theater's good, a good experience. So yeah, I don't know. So I, I don't know. I find it hard to believe that theaters could go away, and I also find it hard to believe that movies would kind of be made the same without them. So that's I don't know. We'll just have to see where it all goes. I guess we'll know more about what they're talking about Disney wise on number tenth, and because uh, I think I brought up to you just to close this topic out. The main thing that uh, I think I initially thought of with this is that with someone as big as Disney as a production company and a studio head shifting gears and Focusing on their streaming service, I could see either A, all the other studios following suit and really pretty much putting the nail on the coffin on theaters, or all these other studios like WB and Universal and all these things, they just got a lot more free real estate than the movie theater industry. Because if Disney, because Disney for the last two years has had a record breaking box office, like I think it was like five billion and then like seven or eight billion the next year something along those lines. Like, they've made more money in the box office the past two years like than any other studio in history. And uh, if they're going to be producing more content for streaming, that opens up the, you know, a lot more theater dates, show times for you know, a WB movie or a Universal movie, whatever. They don't have to compete as much. So, we'll just have to wait. I don't know. Question is, guys, what do you think? What are your thoughts on, you know, this whole... Disney focusing on streaming their streaming service. I, again, I'm just hoping it, it, no matter what, it's not at a detriment to the movies and the quality of the movies and a, a detriment to the theater going industry itself. Movie theaters. I, I don't want the movie theaters to go away. So um, whatever you guys think, just let us know down in the comments section below. All right, guys. So our last segment here is going to be, there's like four topics here, four things, the four news events that happened here in the, we're just going to give our quick thoughts on them because there's nothing uh, nothing too newsworthy in some ways, but also some kind of interesting things here that we just kind of want to give our quick thoughts on it. Um, the first one being um, Adam McKay, and I, we just kind of touched on it on the last uh, segment they were talking about this, the Disney streaming service, Netflix thing. Uh, Adam McKay has set up a Netflix movie that quite possibly, like, legitimately has one of the most stacked casts. I mean, especially the most stacked cast for any movie that's ever came to Netflix, 100%. This is uh, an insane cast. We got Leonardo DiCaprio, Meryl Streep, Jonah Hill, Timothy Chalamet, Ariana Grande, Jennifer Lawrence, and then Kate Blanchett, like, Kid Cudi, Matthew Perry, Chandler Bing himself. Like, dude, the list just goes on with this cast. 
I have no idea what this movie is even about. It doesn't yeah. say, like nothing in this article says. I don't know if there's another article. I haven't really looked into it. Film at all. follows two low level astronomers who embark on a media tour to warn mankind of an approaching asteroid. There we go. I completely missed that. Thanks for actually seeing <laughs> hey, that. It's because hey. this whole the whole article is casting. Like that's, that's so much of a cast. You see this huge thing, and I didn't even notice this thing. So yeah, I mean that sounds kind of cool, I guess. But what do you need? What do you need this big of a like star-studded cast to tell what seems like a I don't know a small story? You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, really. Two low-level astronomers and it's like media purposely just stacking it to be, you know, as star-packed as they can make it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely interesting. Um, this, I don't know, seeing Leo, like, this is just a huge cast. I could not, like, bring it up. So, I mean, you guys have anything you want to comment on with this? It, I'm sure it'll be interesting. <laughs> I, I, what else has Adam McKay done? I mean, his name sounds really familiar to me, but I can't. Right off the top of my head, um, what else he's done? Let me pull up his IMDb. Um, because isn't he I like, mean, clearly, clearly, I think this might just be more. It sounds like this might be a case of he just wants his friends to be in a movie, and they they just like want to hang out with him and be. You know, this might be a kind of a good everybody, point. everybody, ha everybody's been away from everything for so long because of COVID, and while they're waiting for their projects to, to be restarted, they're like, hey, yeah, we'll do this. I'll do this bit part in this in Adam's movie for him. Yeah. The big things he did was like the big short and, and vice, I'd say. I mean, okay. this is his first two that come to my mind here. And then with uh what else do you have here? He, oh, the other guys. Okay. He produced the so, other guys. He wrote, he, he wrote the big short. Um I mean he he, he writes a lot, so Okay. Oh, he's just yeah, like, tons of stuff. Again, yeah, I'm sure. So I'm sure all these parts are. You know, I'm not sure who the main players are in this movie, but I'm sure these parts are. You know, a, a handful of minutes of screen time, five minutes of screen time. So there, these people are going to be able to drop in and do this filming in a day or so for these parts, for on the majority. And right. this is just. This is more just. Hey, let's all get together and have some fun. Yeah, I mean, what was that? I, it's a. It's just a. You don't see a lot of these big movie star casts like this anymore, though. You really don't. Like no. this is like because this is just like big names all being in the same movie, and this that doesn't happen that much anymore. So it's just kind of cool to see, in some ways. So I'm I'm definitely interested. I'm also just like I said, more kind of confused with it at this point now, knowing that it focuses on two low level astronomers. Like it just seems like such a small story, and I'm wondering who who the astronomers. Are. Like I wonder who yeah. the leads actually are going to be. Yeah. Like I guess Jennifer Lawrence was attached to it first, so maybe is she one of the astronomers? Like I don't know. I'm I'm excited. Probably more than anything on here though, Matthew Perry is the one who probably like caught me by surprise <laughs> the most because dude, I love me some Chandler. I love Matthew Perry, so he doesn't pop. Could up this movie have any more people in it? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's good. Mrs. Chandler Bong. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah. Well. Um, Guys, whatever you think, let us know down in the comment section below about this, this incredibly large cast. That's pretty much uh, all, all I really want to cover on it. It's just it's a big cast. That's a big cast. Real big cast. Real big cast. But uh, we'll get into this next topic here is the uh, Mad Max uh, spinoff for Furiosa. Uh, it's in the works now. It still hasn't been officially greenlit. And a lot of people were kind of taken aback by this just because... Uh, it's going to be a prequel, and it's not going to have Charlie Theron in it. So, like, a lot of people were kind of turned off by it. I don't really know if it's really a good or bad choice to do either or. Like, Charlie Theron's awesome. And I was like, this is a theory crap thing, too. I want to throw at you. Uh, primarily, I think you, you would understand this one, John. I bet you yeah, that if uh, Zack Schneider hadn't cast Gal Gadot in, as Wonder Woman in BVS, right? I guarantee you. That Charlie Theron would be our Wonder Woman right now. You think? So? Yeah, because she did Monster with Patty Jenkins. So yeah. I could totally see if Patty Jenkins came in to direct a Wonder Woman movie. I feel like Charlize would have been. She would a, pull her in. I feel like it would have. It's kismet too, because she would have been. She would have been a phenomenal Wonder Woman, dude. She oh yeah. Would be like, oh my god! Like not the gals like bad, but she is nowhere near as talented of an actress as Charlize Theron is. Yeah. So like. And I ever since uh, 
uh, Patty Jenkins came on to direct Roman, I was like, damn it, dude. I wish <laughs> I wish they wouldn't have casted them because I immediately was like, dude, Charlize could be, that would have been the best. That would have been the absolute best. But anyway, I think the coolest news about this thing, though, is because it was rumored a while back that was this Furiosa thing that they're going to be doing a prequel with Anya Taylor-Joy in it, uh, in the title role. But now they've added Chris Hemsworth and Yahya Abdul-Mateen, who played uh, Dr. Manhattan in the HBO Watchmen series. He also played Black Manta in uh, the Aquaman movie. So mm -hmm. He's great. I really, I, I, I've been liking everything. I've, I mean, I've only really seen him in those two things, but he was great in those. So I'm excited to see him come back. But I hope he gets more to do as Black Manta at some point. Um, so yeah, what do, you, uh, what do you guys think about this? It seems like um, Chris Hemsworth, uh, I can't remember his name of the character in here, but it sounds like Chris Hemsworth is going to be playing the villain just really? based on his name. Sounds and I'm trying to find where it said what his name was. What do, you, what do you guys think of this? I like Mad Max. So, and I think Charlize Theron's a great actress. So. Well, she's, she's not going to be in it. But what I, I mean... What I meant to say is like her character in the original Mad Max movies was good. I think it'd be cool to like dive deeper into that character. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not her playing. Well, and with it being a prequel, I'm wondering how they how they construct the story. I mean, will, will there be an, a, a way for them to have something open up with Charlie's Theron's character, her actually playing her character, talking about something that happened when she was younger setting this world up and then they flash back to the younger version of hers and kind of book in this movie with so that like so they don't remove her entirely from the movie or do they just you know say okay it's just a prequel we're not even going to it, it just seems odd to me that they were coming off of the success of the last mad max movie that they would not find a way to work her into the story in some fashion um, even if it is just setting the setting it up as as sort of a pseudo narrator at the beginning and then booking and and book ending it with her at the end, yeah, or it could like sh tell the whole story and then at the very end of the movie, it shows that she was actually just telling a story that kind yeah. of thing, yeah, exactly like I, you know, something like that, yeah, and I could see that. I would. I feel like uh, people. Wouldn't you think that was kind of like a cock tease, though? Because like, because like I said, a lot of people actually were just like mad about like they only wanted this if it was going to be Charlize, because everyone loved Charlize in that movie. So I could feel like if 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 they did like shoehorn her in at the very end of the movie as like a gotcha, I feel like it'd come off as a gotcha. Like, see, we had her. Yeah, like, she was yeah. Here. I'm just. I mean, there has to be a reason they chose to go this route rather than just a direct sequel to Fury Road. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I, I don't know, maybe the sequel to Fury Road is still coming and this is a stopgap until they're ready to, to film that movie is, is she committed to film other parts and she doesn't, she isn't available for another year or two. And that's why they're not moving forward yet with that. I don't know. Yeah. Cause that's another thing too. Like with, I, I'm really not a fan of like in their principle, I'm not a fan of prequels. Like, in all, mm -hmm. like when it comes down to it, not that they're. Not that like all the prequels are bad. Like there's obviously good prequels out there, and uh, but I just don't like you. Like everyone liked the character Charlize was playing, but just because we like that character doesn't mean we need to see how she became that character or what led her to becoming like that way. And like I, like I want to see that character progress further because I liked that character. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, and that's so I can see why people are upset about it. That yeah. actress, that portrayal. Yeah, that, like yeah. I, I want to see you continue that story. Like I don't care about what happened before that because that's the other thing I hate about prequels is like there's it, there's like no stakes in it, man. Because like the only thing they're gonna show us maybe here is like how she lost her arm or something. That's what I was gonna say. You know, like and it's like who cares, dude. It's like how Han Solo got his name in the Solo movie. It's like <laughs> wow. Yeah, totally needed to be told, right? Like that movie was actually good though. But at the same time, no one asked for that movie. No. Like, yeah. No one asked. There's a lot of other different Star Wars universe movies yeah. they could have done. And it's the same thing. Like Star Wars being a perfect example. They just keep doing prequels or sticking to the same familiar stuff instead of like, I don't just progress things. Move along. Move it on. So I would kind of like to see. I think people probably would have been a little bit more on board with it. Not that people are just like 100% hating it by any means, but 
if we got would have gotten the follow up with Charlize Theron and then bring it to like bring her character to a nice close, like you know maybe she dies at the end, whatever. But then do the prequel with Anya Taylor Joy and all that stuff because I think that like people would probably definitely be clamoring for it then. Like yeah. I don't know. I think with this kind of thing though, it is more of an odd choice to go the prequel route. Kind of like with what you were saying, it was just like such a ever. Everyone was like, it was a beloved character in that movie. Everyone liked that portrayal of it. So why remove it? It's it would be almost like if they made the original trilogy and then decided to make a prequel to Han Solo right after like uh, A New Hope. Just like everyone yeah. really loves Han Solo. Let's do a prequel. Yeah. <laughs> let's tell everybody how Han Solo got here. It's like okay, cool. Let's call Harrison Ford. No, we're not going to call Harrison. We're going to get Jim over here to do it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, not that Anya Taylor Joy is not a great actress, and I want to see her play Fury Road and everything. It just seems like an odd choice to go from Fury Road to a prequel, as opposed to well, let's just keep going, guys. Right? Yeah. But so, whatever you guys think, though, let us know down in the comment section below. We're going to move on to this next topic here, which is Joaquin Phoenix is teaming back up with Ridley Scott here, uh, going back to the Gladiator days because uh, Joaquin is going to be playing uh, Napoleon. So. What That's do you guys think? What do you guys? Think? I was just when I first read this article, I was just like, Ridley Scott and Joaquin Phoenix, I'm on board. Yeah, because obviously they they worked well together in Gladiator, so let's just keep this going. Like, I think Joaquin so. Phoenix would make an excellent Napoleon. Oh, I totally. Yeah, right. but I, I I'm looking forward to it just for the sheer fact of the two, like the name, their names attached to it alone is like, I'm on board. Like, yeah, you know it's going to be a quality piece. Yeah, I mean I'm good. So I'm looking forward to it. You guys got anything you want to add to it? I was just going to make a bunch of people mad, but do you not like either of these people? <laughs> no, I, I love Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Ridley Scott. Right? I mean, he's fine. I, I yeah. I'm just you don't like okay. Gladiator or Alien or Blade Alien? Runner. Yeah. Okay, okay. Here you go. Gladiator overrated. I mean. It was good, but was my good. God, that movie, like, it won Best Picture that year, and I just, oh, oof. Hold on. You keep, okay. keep talking. I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I've never found Gladiator to be as good as the praise that it gets. Um, and uh, it has some great scenes. It has some good action in it, but I don't understand what sets that movie up on the pedestal that it's on. Um, so when I hear that Joaquin Phoenix and Ridley Scott are doing a Napoleon movie, it's like, all right, cool. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll see it and I'll watch it. I, I, I expect to be pretty entertained by it, but I, I don't, it, it's about as exciting to me as, you know, the monster hunter movie coming out. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Am I not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you, John. I, that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> That was yeah, for you right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, like I no, said, dude, Gladiator's not overrated. It's good. It's good. It, it really won good. Best Picture the year it came out. I mean, come what on. Was what, what, was huh? what was it up against? What was it up against? What was it up against? I don't, know. I like, don't know. But I just remember for years hearing about, oh, Gladiator, Gladiator, Gladiator. It's finally died down. The past did you see the movie? So, but, it was yeah, a good movie. It. Fine. Hold on. I mean, like I said, it was good. It was entertaining. It just wasn't like the best movie. Do you like and, The Martian? What's that? The Martian? Martian was good. It was all Scott right. made that too. I'm not saying so again, like I, I feel like I've really I've, I've stuck my foot about as far down my throat as I can go. Um, I mean Ridley Scott has made some bad movies too. Like so true. He's true. made some bad movies. Okay, okay. Here here's my here's my best example because they kind of came out. Or at least in in the '90s, in that same time frame, The Matrix is a much better movie than Gladiator, and The Matrix got no Academy. I don't know about that. Oh, I, a different kind. What do of you movie. mean? No, I don't well, think I it's it's not as good. No, here's the thing. Oh, do I like The Matrix more? Yeah, but that's like I I think Gladiator is a better movie. It's overall. a different caliber. Yeah, I I I like it because I like sci-fi shit. Yeah, and like so, I'm all, I, I I'm biased as a, as a quality production. I think Gladiator was a much better produced movie and told like a much I don't know, not necessarily a better story, but it was just better made in some ways. 
Like, oh. Like, mm. Matrix is like my favorite movie of all time. So Subjective. It's one of my favorite movies. I don't know if it's number one, but it's been num- it's it's been up in the top five easy. Like, can't, like you've always still, really I, liked. I've the loved the Matrix. Like, it's literally. It, I, if if I if I said it was my favorite movie right now, like I wouldn't be lying. Like, but I also like I'm not really thinking about it. So like it's kind of hard to say. I'm still trying to figure out. Like I don't know why when I Google Gladiator Best Picture nominees and it's like it's not even there. It's showing like yeah. I was gonna say that might be something hard to. It shouldn't be. You should just. No, it should just show I, the I, list. I don't. I can't remember what year it won. Um, I guess what year it came out, but. It came out in 2000, so it would have been the 2001 Academy Awards. Best um, Picture, Gladiator, Chocolate, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Aaron Brockovich, and Traffic. You're telling me it wasn't the best picture out, out of, of all of those, those movies? It was better than it, Crouching Tiger was better. No. Crouching Tiger no. is amazing. I don't the think it's better than in that film. Oh my goodness. It was good cinematography. But... Uh, it's a good movie. I don't think it's Baron Gladiator. Version. Nah. I don't, I don't think it's Baron Gladiator. It's that we'll Gladiator. Just to, we'll just I'm have surprised to agree to yeah, we'll agree to disagree. Because... I think Glad I think Gladiator deservedly won there. I think the year the one that got the as, as far as things that got robbed at the Oscars, um um what was it? Uh I'm trying to bring trying to think of It was uh, Forrest Gump. When Forrest Gump won. What year was that? 96, maybe? Yeah, because Forrest Gump was up against, yeah, it was the 67th Academy Awards. It was ever. Forrest Gump was up against uh, Shawshank Redemption, Pulp Fiction, Quiz Show, and Four Weddings and a Funeral. God. I think Shawshank or Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Substantially better movies. So I think. I mean, I get it. It was Forrest Gump, and everyone loved that movie, and everyone loves Tom Hanks. But one of those like timeless classics. Well, it's not. It's, it's not a better movie than Shawshank Redemption. Like, I, it, it's not. It's not better. Like, in my opinion, so I don't. Know. Definitely not better than. Pulp that's Fiction. the biggest robbery I think that's happened at the Oscars. That at least I can think of off the top of my head. So, but anyway, as far as this goes, I'm looking <laughs> forward to it with uh, the. Uh, Napoleon movie with Ridley Scott. I like. I it's. I love Walking Phoenix. So I'm, I'll totally take seeing him teamed up with someone who is as who can be as good of a filmmaker as Ridley Scott has proven himself to be numerous times. Not that he's amazing and hasn't made bad movies, but there's tons. I'm always gonna have a special place in my heart for Ridley Scott because he created the Alien first. Oh and yeah, I. I love me some xenomorphs, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I love me some xenomorphs. So, yeah, the alien, yeah. yeah. I love alien. Good, good shit. So, I'm looking forward to that. Our final topic here today. Well, actually, guys, first, let us know what you guys think about this uh, pairing, re- reuniting this duo of Joaquin Phoenix and Ridley Scott. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. But then, our final topic that we're going to get into here real quick is that Dexter is coming back in 2021. And I heard, I swear to God, I heard a rumor about this happening like a while back. And I was like, yeah, man, they should bring Dexter back. I was just about to ask, does it need to come back? They should, because... I wasn't a Dexter. The end stuck. (laughs) The end, so I was like, man, if they bring it back, then the end could be good if they execute this well. Because, like, the, the, the ending of the series set up a way for you to just continue it on in some way. So if they can really bring this, this they're calling this like I think it was a ten part miniseries or just a miniseries. I don't. I, yeah, ten episode miniseries, and it's gonna pick up where I didn't write this article. The extremely disappointing series finale took place. Okay, it's gonna pick up afterwards. So you could always retcon this in a way in your own head and say this was always the plan. They end the show terribly just so that it because it wasn't the end. This is gonna just be to bring the it end. back years yeah, and years. So later. This is gonna be the end. So it could they could make that shitty ending be a really good ending if they're able to bring this home in a very satisfying way. And one of the good things, at least that has me hopeful this is good, because I really like the show. And I think that I gotta hop out for just a second. Sorry. You're all right, dude. Um, I really like the show though, and uh 
I'm just hoping that, uh, or the one thing that has me like excited for this, Rick, is the fact that, uh, oh, wrong one. Here. What's up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the uh, thing that has me most excited for this and them coming back is uh, the original creator of the show is, is who's coming back to do this. So I think. So it's going to pick up kind of like where it left off. Well, the guy, he, well, he was off the show with after like the fourth season, I think. Oh, so the, then that's when a lot of people didn't uh, like where everything kind of went afterward. But it was either the first I can't, man, I'm getting my facts all wrong. So don't quote me. But the guy who initially created the show, who eventually left the show and he wasn't a part of the show when uh, the series actually ended, he is coming back to actually produce this. 10 part series and everything. So. Well, hopefully it'll be decent then. I mean, yeah, that's what has me the most hope for. Cause like season, like the first couple of seasons, especially season one of Dex, great. I love, I love the first season. It's a weird season. show. Yeah, I like, uh, I want to say it was the fourth season where he kicked off and then the last four seasons were done by. Uh, so there's eight total? There are eight. So I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I hope they just, uh, I hope it just. I hope they're able to bring it home or anything like. Yeah, bring like, it home. Just bring it home. Yeah. Have a nice, like, good ending to the se the series. Just because that's what it sounds like they're trying to do. I mean, like, if anything, make up for that disappointing series finale. Yeah, because uh, I don't know. The ending is just. Is it's not that the joke? ending was bad, but it was just it's like to end the show on. It was bad. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's just kind of like it's. It's one of those endings that leaves you with no, like just too many questions. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean, it's, sure. it's like it doesn't bring anything to a nice conclusion or resolution. It's like shit's happening, and it's over. Yeah, like, yeah. no more. It sounds so. like it just kind of came to like a super abrupt end. And it's just in some ways quite it disappointed. Did. Yeah, because there's like a big climax, and then it just cuts to the you know what's act what's happening now, and there it is. You know, he's a lumber Done now. Over. Yeah. No. Uh, that's, that's it. Cut to black. So I'm hoping they just bring it home. So but that's uh, pretty much it. For, uh, that's all I've got to say about the Dex. I was going to say, I don't have much else to say about Me either, man. I'm, I'm excited to see it, though. I, just wanted to, I like the show, so I'm always good for new shows. It was very shows. popular. Yeah, I'm good for, always good for new shows coming back. So, yeah. But the question is, what do you guys think about the Dexter making a hopefully triumphant return here in 2021? I'm excited for it. Also, there was a show I forget what it's called, but uh, it was look at it's, it was on Netflix with Michael C. Hall. It was just came out like uh, I think last year or earlier this year, and it was actually pretty good. He played like a father, his daughter went missing, something like that. It was really good. Go check it out. So if you're trying to fill in, Dexter is also still on Netflix right now. So if you want to get caught up on Dexter, it's there. Then find that other uh, Michael C. Hall show. Probably recommend it to you afterward anyway. So go watch that. And, uh, that's it. Let us know down in the comment section below what you guys think about Dexter coming back. All right, but that'll do it for us today, guys. Don't forget that you can submit topics and questions to the show by emailing us at honestanduneducated at gmail.com. Again, this will be up in audio format on your, you'll find it on your podcast network of choice, Spotify, Amazon, Apple, whatever. It's all out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We have new content coming out soon. We got some more you know, conspiracy videos with a uh, good Rick Metz here. Uh, Rick, where can everybody find you online real quick? Follow me on Instagram, Sir Rick Metz. Good deal. But I'll probably have some uh, more, more, more gameplay streams and whatnot too coming up here. Probably some more squadron stuff with John Knight. Here. So what, uh, where can everybody find you online, John? Uh, you guys can tell me why I'm wrong about Gladiator over on the Twitters at Nightwing underscore J. There you go. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you know, if we if we had like a huge audience, I'm sure you really would get some people. <laughs> yeah, probably right. get some people hollering at you. Right. So, uh, for sure. Um, hey, but, I'm open minded. Come convince me. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't fault you for not liking it, but I or not or thinking it's overrated. I just, I don't know. I don't really think it's overrated. I think it got just as much credit as it needs to get. You know, I think it's good. It's like saying Lord of the Rings is overrated. Like in some ways, like that's the story. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not. That's my. Point. <laughs> it's it's not. It's good. Like it's a good movie. So I don't know. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching again. Like and subscribe. Uh, we got like I said more stuff coming. So uh, just appreciate it. You can find me at Sir Rob Beefo. All platforms of choice. Just look for that. You'll probably find me somewhere. Uh, but uh, for now, guys, that's it. Uh, take care.